So uh, we're going to get started now. Um, we're going to be presenting about searching for health information. I'm Morgan Babb. This is... I'm Orvi Dingwall. Um, and we're the MyNet librarians. I'm the MyNet librarian for Manitoba Health. And, and I'm the head of outreach services and the MyNet librarian for the regional health authorities outside the city of Winnipeg. So uh, in terms of the objectives for today's session, we're hoping to describe some online resources, uh, some health information uh, that you can search for, and we're focusing on uh, materials that you don't need a University of Manitoba subscription access to use. So these, these are publicly available resources or available to you resources. They're not all publicly available. Um, and we're going to teach you how to choose which resources are best based on your information needs and how to create an effective search strategy so that you can more easily find what you're looking for instead of uh, just kind of muddling, I guess, and, and hoping that you're getting the information you want. And uh, we're also going to talk briefly about MyNet's uh, four primary library services, just so that you know who we are and what we do and what we can do for you. I tried to. Didn't okay, um, and then there are some goals for you guys, and so this is hopefully you'll learn something new here. But in case it's all review, even if it's all review, it's it's good to reaffirm this information within your own mind and, and make sure that you've got a solid sense of it. And there's no harm in, in rehashing things. Some of the stuff, if you attended our uh, googling for good evidence session earlier this year. Um, that, that part will be review for you, but most of it will be brand new information that we haven't talked about in one of these uh, seminars before. So, um, I'll just discuss briefly what MyNet is. Uh, so, it's pronounced MyNet, first of all, not MCNET. Um, and it's Manitoba's Health Information and Knowledge Network. Um, and it's a service provided from the University of Manitoba to uh, healthcare professionals in the province, so the staff of Manitoba Health, fee-for-service physicians, and staff of participating regional health authorities, which isn't all of them, but is most of them. Um, and here's the MyNet team. You've met two of us. There's me, and there's Orvi. There's also Gail Matheson, who's our other librarian, and Cheryl Haas, who is our library assistant, and who, if you've ever had to do any of the document delivery that we do, you have been dealing with it. Um, so our, our four key services that are available to all of you are literature searches. So if you have a question that you need to find information on, you can send us this question and we will put together a list of resources for you, uh, complete with titles and abstracts, and then you can request the information that we've, the information on that list to be sent to you to read more closely and to do that via document delivery. Um, you can also request things that weren't on a literature search. Uh, so if you just heard about an article that you really like the sound of, <coughs> sorry, pardon me, um, or if there's something that you otherwise want that's behind a paywall, don't pay for it, just email us and we will send it your way. Um, we can also send books to you as long as they're in the University of Manitoba's collection. Um, and we have a small budget to purchase new books if there's one you really want and we don't have it in our collection. Um, we also do current awareness alerts. So if you want to stay up to date on a certain topic, um, and this can be anything really, um, we'll set up an alert that once a week it sends you what's new in that area um, that's appearing in the databases. And uh, finally, we do training education and orientation sessions. So this is one of our education sessions. Um, we can do them sort of on demand. Uh, if you need us to come out and talk to you, we can certainly do that. Uh, if you need a one-on-one -on -one session or a large group session um, on really any topic, is, we'll come out and do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just shoot us an email if you're interested in any of that stuff. Uh, you can also see more details about all of this on the MyNet website, mynet.ca. And just one thing, that all of the sessions that we do offer are free. So if you're having um, a bunch of people together uh, in the place where you work or um, you're getting together for whatever reason, we're happy to come and present or to do some kind of training session, and there's no cost to you for that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then I'll just pass it over to Dorothy. Great. So we, uh, the first part of today's session is starting with 
uh, the question that you're asking. So before you even dive into different places to look for information, um, we recommend just taking a pause and think about the question and the thing that you're asking about. So sometimes the question you're asking is really straightforward, it's really simple. Um, and today we, we decided to focus a little bit about vitamin D. Um, and so should uh, pregnant women take vitamin D supplements? That's a pretty simple, straightforward question. Other times questions are more complicated. So is it best for pregnant women and their babies when mom takes vitamin D by itself or with calcium. So now we've got a few more moving parts and we want to think through, are there other moving parts that we want to throw in here? Are there other outcomes? Um, and there are different tools. Oh, so like in this instance, what does best mean? And also, are we talking about women when they are with child or are we also talking about when mom is breastfeeding? So, um, another way that we could ask this question is, do oral supplements with vitamin D alone or in combination with calcium given to women during pregnancy improve maternal and neonatal outcomes? So we have uh, been a bit more descriptive in some of those questions from that first question that we have. So the way that we got there was through a method called PICO. Uh, so this is something that you can throw into your searching toolbox and when you're thinking about uh, looking for health information, think through these four points. What is your population or who are your patients? What is the intervention? What are you comparing that intervention to? And what is the outcome that you're looking to assess? So when you're making a search, you always want to have at least three of these concepts to develop your strategy. You don't always need four. So often intervention and comparison get lumped together. Um, and so there is our question again. The population or the patient are the pregnant women. The intervention is vitamin D alone. The comparison is vitamin D with calcium. And the outcome are maternal and neonatal outcomes. And obviously we'd also want to have a list of what specifically those are. And so that was, that's what we've got here on this next slide. Storming. Um, what are the different terms that we could have for pregnant women? Well, it might be pregnancy, it might be prenatal, there might be some others. Um, and intervention, vitamin D, it's a pretty, not too many synonyms for vitamin D. Vitamin D is vitamin D. Um, and we also might want to look at calcium as well. And outcomes, I've listed three here. There are many, 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 but I ran out of room on the slide. But this is just to kind of give you an idea that everything in the population column we would combine with or, so pregnant women or pregnancy or prenatal, and then we would combine each column with and, so pregnant women and vitamin D and preeclampsia. So this is just how we kind of start to think about uh, putting our search together. So we're going to launch a poll. This is our first time with our new software, shiny new um, technology. Shiny new technology. And I have queued up a poll here, so I'm going to launch it. And the poll is open, so if you just want to cast your vote. Great, so we've got... I'm just watching the results come in. <laughs> almost everybody. Okay, so we'll close and, oh, it didn't display the result. Okay, so we can just tell you that 9% um, of you said that you'd ask a colleague. Most of you, 64% said you'd go to Google. 27% said you'd go to UpToDate. Nobody would go to PubMed and nobody would go to a textbook. Excellent. Yeah. So, sorry, I guess I gotta... That's okay. Here. So we, were, we got so excited about our poll. <laughs> so the second most popular <laughs> option, up today. Uh, I'm gonna talk briefly about that. So for those of you not familiar, um, you've had access to up to date since January 2016. And it is a uh, tool that can, it's a, it's a point of care tool, really. Um, 
uh, for the fee-for-service physicians, the University of Manitoba staff, the regional health authorities, Cancer Care Manitoba, Manitoba Health Seniors and Active Living. It's paid for by the Manitoba government, um, but if you're not at one of the... Look okay. Yeah, if you're not at... Well, we'll talk about locations later. What is it? Um, so it's this clinical decision support tool, and it's got just tons of information in it, 10,500 different topics, a drug database, um, the patient education, um, a whole bunch of graphics that you can use in your own education uh, sessions, and uh, medical calculators as well. Uh, the graphics are really handy if you're trying to see what they're talking about um, in any given, to given topic. Um, oh, and I guess, I guess there's a colon here now. So we asked if where you searched first, but now we're going to ask, have you ever searched up to date at all? So let's just get the poll ready to go here. Yep. Yeah. yeah, great much. Awesome. So if everybody could just answer this poll question while we're we're waiting. I just want to see the level of familiarity with up to date if you've ever searched it. Um, okay. And again, we're just watching the responses come in here, so. Okay, I think that sounds to everybody. Okay. okay, great. Yeah, so most of you have heard of it, 80%, um, and, or have searched it rather, not heard of it. Um, and 20% uh, have never searched it. So that's, so this may be a review for some of you, um, but we'll go through the same sort of thing, so. The question, once again, should pregnant women take vitamin D supplements? Uh, up to date is pretty straightforward when you do a search. Um, this is the desktop view that you're seeing here. Uh, so what you would see on your computer, there's also a mobile version uh, that's, it looks different than this, but it functions the same way. Um, though it's a little bit more limited in some of its, some of its things. The, uh, so if you do a search for vitamin D pregnancy, and you can see we've just pulled out the keywords rather than asking a question. What are the key parts here? Vitamin D is one of the key parts, and pregnancy is the other key part. And uh, you can see these different topics coming up, and you can see there's also... I keep wanting to point at the screen, and then I realize that you're just seeing me separated from this, and you can't see what I'm pointing at. Um, so hopefully you can see the mouse. Um, but there's a title for each article, and there's like a little snippet that comes from it. And so we've got like vitamin D deficiency in adults, we've got nutrition and pregnancy, uh, vitamin D insufficiency and deficiency in children and adolescents. Um, and so if you click on any one of these topics, and in this case nutrition and pregnancy looks like it might be one of the, the better options, you can see on the side that there's a uh, the outline of the topics, and so most of them will have summary and recommendations, and uh, you can see right down here there's a section in micronutrients specifically on calcium and vitamin D. Uh, so that might be what you need. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they tell you in each one of these that the literature review is current through, in this case, August 2017, and that it was last updated in August 15, 2017. So if that's the degree of up-to-dateness that you need, that's great. If you need more up-to-date, if you need from last week, well, then you might need to look somewhere else. <laughs> but, um, and they, they, yeah, at the end of each one, they give a list of, of resources that they've used to gather this information. So if you need more, you can go to the reference list at the bottom of the page as well. Um, and, oh, sorry. Oh, that's okay. So up to date is kind of best to search when you're looking for an overview. In some ways, it kind of functions like a textbook, um, but a more up to date one than than really any other textbook. Um, and it's it's better for medical related topics than say nursing related topics or or any of those topics that are maybe more related to to policy and, and not specifically to medical information. Um, they're also good for step by step instructions and for when you need to give information to a patient. Um, so there's information that's that's for the practitioners and a lot of topics also have patient guides that you can hand out to patients and they can sort of like 
the basic patient guide and the more advanced patient guide for, for the ones who maybe know a little bit more or more familiar with whatever they're talking about. So, yeah, pretty, yeah, straightforward. And um, so up-to-date is a really great place to start um, to pop in some terms. And sometimes it has a great entry on exactly what you're looking for. And other times it will have nothing on the topic that you're looking for. It's kind of an all or nothing sort of thing. Um, and they are adding new topics all the time. Yeah. So if, there's not some, if there wasn't something there three months ago, that doesn't mean that it won't necessarily be there now. And anytime you find one of those topics where they don't have anything on it or it doesn't get into enough, enough depth, then by all means message us and ask for a literature search to go with that extra step. Okay, our third and final poll, we kind of have them all lumped into the same, uh, the same part of the presentation. Um, we're going, so we're asking here, how familiar are you with PubMed? We should play the Jeopardy music during this part. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'd get sued. Okay. We'll close that. So it looks like most people are um, have heard about PubMed or have searched it in the past or searched it a little bit, but sounds like no, um, no real super users. And that is just fine. Um, oh, I will also mention that we do have a handout, and at the conclusion of today's session, then we'll be sending it out to everyone, and it has a summary of all of the resources that we're covering today, and all of the sort of um, the summary points, so each of the essential resources, and sort of when, um, when we recommend the best time to go to each of those resources is. And we're also going to be sending out the slides to yeah. you as well. So PubMed is freely available at PubMed.gov, and, um, and it's free with 26 million citations and counting, and it covers biomedicine, health, life sciences, behavior sciences, all kinds of health and health sciences. There are help and tutorials available. They're really great if you like to learn in that way. Um, this is a great way to learn to search them. We also can, um, our December session is just focusing on searching PubMed. Um, if it's really outside your comfort zone, again, just shoot us an email. It's very much within our comfort zone. It's, it's almost every day. Yeah, at, le <laughs> at least every day yeah. kind of thing. Um, and so we're happy to do the search for you. Again, the intent here today is just to let you know about these things and to just give you um, a few tips. So uh, PubMed, you can start out by just basic keyword searching. So I typed in vitamin D here, and you can see that there in the drop-down, it gave me a whole bunch of suggestions, and I can click on any one of those. So really straightforward. I got a little bit fancier on this search. I put vitamin D in quotations. I added and, because I want vitamin D and pregnancy. Uh, and you can see I got 3,000 results. Now, I know sometimes um, you're happy to screen, no, I don't know any time when you're happy to screen through 3,000 results. So what you can do, um, oh, I'll just go back a screen, sorry. Um, so you can see in the middle of the page, those are the results. And in the blue underline, that's where, that's the title of the, of the reference. And if you click on it, it will take you into the full reference. You can see the abstract and all of the authors and all the information about it. Underneath the blue underline uh, are the list of authors, and underneath that is the title of the journal, the date, um, and some more information about the journal. Um, and on the left-hand side, we're going to talk through some of those limits. So uh, here we are on the left-hand side. You can see it tells you that you can uh, filter by article type. So if you only wanted guidelines or review articles or other kinds of types of articles, you can click on those. You can also limit to free full text. And this is something that I know um, for you in the regions, um, that this is, well, and at Manitoba Health. This can be, if you need a full text article today uh, or in the next hour, this is a great way to, uh, to find it. So when I limit, so I decided I wanted to limit my vitamin D and pregnancy search to guidelines and to free full text. 
And when I did that, my 3,000 results dropped to five, which sometimes is helpful and sometimes is not helpful. <laughs> 3,000 3, might still be too many and the five might not be the right five. So I clicked into the, uh, the one guideline and now I can see the whole abstract and some, inf some more information about it. And on the right hand side here, that is where if I click on that, that's my, uh, my link to the full text. So PubMed is best to search if you're searching for journal articles. It does also have some books and some guidelines and a few other things, but primarily it's journal articles. Um, and that's kind of when it's best to search PubMed. All right, so we're going to sort of uh, plug ourselves here, um, and we're going to talk about the MyNet toolkits. So these are something that we create um, for you guys to use, um, and they're created for a number of different specialties mm -hmm. in, uh, in healthcare, <laughs> um, and they're sort of a one-stop shop for resources in, the, in your subject area, um, or in that subject area, and uh, they tend unless we've been specifically asked to include something that's behind a paywall, they tend to be resources that are freely available to you. Um, <clears throat> and we can also work with you to develop or update or improve any of our toolkits. Um, so if there's not one for your special team, you would like one there, or like there to be one, ah, words, <laughs> um, you can just send us an email and uh, we can start working on it with you. Or if you've got a favorite resource that you find is missing from one of the pages, again, pop us an email or give us a call. We're happy to add them. Absolutely. Um, and so where can you find them? Well, if you go to mynet.ca, uh, you'll see at the, the top there, just under our banner, there's uh, toolkits. And we've got it highlighted in blue, so that's where you go. You'll see a listing here, and you can just click on whichever one catches your fancy. In this case, we've decided general health resources are what we're looking for. Um, and this is what the toolkits look like. The, the titles of all the other toolkits are across the top there. And then you can see in green are different sections. So you've got find evidence, which has databases, clinical practice guidelines. You've got different topics within uh, general health resources, journals that are of, of particular interest. Um, and these categories may change depending on the, the topic. Um, in question. So for some journals may not be as important as say guidelines and so there may be an entire section on guidelines or whatever. Anyways, they're, but they're mostly laid out like this. And uh, a lot of the information in here is what we call gray literature um, or uh, unpublished non-commercial material. Um, so, so things like government reports, policy statements, websites, uh, blogs, um, books, conference proceedings, dissertations, theses, newsletters, even brochures and things like that, which they're not necessarily the peer-reviewed academic resources, but that doesn't mean that they're completely useless to you. Um, and they may be exactly what you need, especially if mm -hmm. you're if you're needing like, government information or something. Um, and the thing about gray literature is that it's, it's often more difficult to find than the peer-reviewed resources. Um, so the toolkits are a great place to have it kind of all together in one place. And so toolkits, unsurprisingly, are best to search when you're looking for gray literature or when you're looking for different types of information or kind of like uh, Kind of like up to date. They're good if you're if you're looking for like a large picture of a topic. Mm -hmm. um, oh. And I will pass it to Harvey. Okay. So, clinical practice guidelines. Um, I should have had a poll here to ask <laughs> who had heard of them or who uses them. Uh, and these are basically guidelines to guide clinical practice. I know that. Um, you know, people have many different opinions on many of them. Some people love to use them. Some people understand the risks and the harms associated with them. Some of you are involved in developing them. But uh, there's a few great places that we can go to find them. And I know sometimes uh, you'll be just wanting to know, is there a practice guideline on this? So here are some tips on where to go if you wanted to look for them. The first is the resource by the Canadian Medical Association. It's now called CPG InfoBase, so that stands for Clinical Practice Guideline InfoBase. 
And this includes the current Canadian guidelines in English and in French. And so, and it is very medicine focused. So if anybody um, in Canada has put out um, a guideline relating to medicine, uh, chances are that it's going to be included in this info base. It's not as all encompassing as including all of the allied health. Um, and it is only the Canadian guidelines, but if Canadian guidelines are what you're looking for, it's the place to go. So this is what it looks like. Um, again, it's very straightforward. In the box that says search all CPGs, you can type in um, what you're looking for. I think I typed in just vitamin D and I got a couple of results, the English and um, the French one. Um, and again, they most of the time they link out then to a free resource. If again you're ever in an instance where a link takes you to something like I know the Society of Obstetricians and Gynecologists have just went to um, all of their guidelines are now behind a paywall. Um, don't ever pay for anything or don't feel like you're, you're in a point where you'll never be able to get that full text. Just send us a message um, and we will be able to get that for you. The next one is called TRIP, uh, and this is, uh, TRIP is an acronym for Turning Research into Practice, and it's a clinical search tool for health professionals, and it, um, it includes uh, information from all over the world. So I know this screen is a little on the small side, uh, but I did a search for vitamin D, and I used vitamin D in quotations, uh, and pregnancy, and uh, and I got, a, you know, 2,451 results, so almost as many as I did in PubMed. Uh, and on the right-hand side, I can limit, this is my favorite thing about TRIP, is I can limit by evidence type. So I'm interested in this case in guidelines, and you can see that there are, uh, it breaks down where the guidelines are by country. So it tells me there's six from Canada, six from Australia, New Zealand, 36 from the UK, 38 from um, America. Uh, this is really helpful. So I often, I usually start with CPG info base just for that Canadian focus, and then I'll come here and see if other countries, um, or even if I've missed some Canadian ones. We can also search for practice guidelines in PubMed, um, and that's what I, uh, you know, we did that limit. It's a little bit confusing. Um, as many things with PubMed are, uh, because if you, if you haven't searched for a guideline before, it might not show you under that article type heading, the guideline is an option for you to click on. So you might have to click on the customize, then you have to select guideline to display. This is the most ludicrous thing. Every time I have to say it out loud, I just can't believe that they haven't fixed this. Um, so you have to select it to display, and then you have to click on it again um, to actually limit to it. So if we've lost you in this conversation, then just send us a message anytime that you're looking for a clinical practice guideline and we can find it for you. Otherwise, it's just one of those things that you have to go through a few times um, and then remember once you're in PubMed. And get frustrated every single time. Yeah, and get frustrated every single time. Uh, and so guidelines are best to search when uh, you are looking for a clinical recommendation. Um, and uh, if you know that there is research available on that topic. So I know it's a little bit of a cyclical um, statement, which is you look for clinical practice guidelines when you're looking for clinical practice guidelines, but a little bit that's when you're <laughs> looking for clinical practice guidelines. Sometimes though, I mean, if you do find that you're, you're searching and you're just finding so much information on a topic, it's a nice way to be able to narrow and to focus what you're finding instead of looking through 3,000 uh, journal articles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now I'm going to talk about Google and Google Scholar. For those of you who attended our Googling for Good Evidence session, this is going to be a review. But as we said at the beginning, it's not bad to review this and just make sure that it's uh, still within your mind. So we're going to be looking at the same question again. Should pregnant women uh, take vitamin D supplements? And uh, some, some basic things to consider. Um, so, first of all, you do want to just, you don't need to ask the should pregnant women be doing this. You would just want to look at the keywords, pregnancy, vitamin D, supplements. Um, or even just vitamin D, not necessarily the supplements as well. You'll do your search and you'll, you'll sort of feel it out. Um, 
So Google searching is not case sensitive. Um, so vitamin D with a little d will return the same results as vitamin D with a capital D. FASD returns the same results as FASD in lowercase. Um, the word order in Google makes a big difference. Um, so if the vitamin D is the more important part of your search, put that first. If pregnancy is more important, put that first. Um, because the first word is the most important word. And every word in your search kind of matters except for the, the small ones that you don't want to be including anyways, like should. Um, so, uh, You may have noticed throughout this session we've been putting quotation marks around things. Um, so vitamin D supplement here, we've got an example, our first trimester. And what this does is it looks for that, those terms in that order. So it will look for vitamin D supplement, not supplement vitamin and D kind of separate and spread out. Um, and so that can be, depending on the topic that you're looking for, that can be very important or, or not tremendously important. Mm -hmm. But it is a good tool, and that's one that's true in most databases, not just Google. Um, Google has sort of a built-in spell checker. Uh, which is really nice, <laughs> and uh, it also will do things like look up both the British and the American spellings of words, which for those of us in Canada who, of course, kind of use both, it's great. Um, and word variations are used, so prenatal actually searches for pregnancy and pregnant as well as for prenatal. Um, so, oh, well, this is one of the new slides, but this is just sort of what what you get when you do a, a search in Google. You can see at the top there, uh, you've got the D drops for the whole family. Uh, oh, okay. Yes. Omit non essential search terms. So, like I mentioned before, leave out the should vitamin D be used in pregnancy. Um, and again, write the answer. So, vitamin D supplement pregnancy. Um, just like if you're on Jeopardy. <laughs> to bring that up again, to bring it back to that. Um, and so you can see there's ads at the top. You basically want to ignore them. They're marked with a little green ad. Um, you can see related questions, which may help you build your search if you're still working on that. Um, and you can see the, the information coming up there. Uh, there's also ads on the side. I would recommend just ignoring ads um, in general, um, especially since they are paid for. and. That's how they got to the top of the list. Yeah. yeah, so they're not there because they're most relevant. They're there because somebody's paying money for them. The first little thing in the box there is a definition, um, which usually comes from a reliable source. Now, there have been uh, stories in the past where, and it's, it's less with medical topics, but there have been ones where the definition that has come up has not been a reliable one and has been from, in some cases, even a hate site. So take that with a bit of a grain of salt. Um, and you can quickly screen through the resources uh, by scrolling down and, and taking a look at They've got like a little snippet from the page itself, which isn't an abstract as such, but it gives you a sense of, of what's there. Um, the other thing, Google works, it sorts things by relevancy. Um, so if you're not finding what you're looking for in the first page of results, it is tremendously unlikely that what you're looking for is going to be on the second page of results because it's going to become less and less relevant. What you'll probably want to do is rebuild your search. Think about synonyms, think about ways to, to word things differently to get what you need. Um, because, yeah, if it's not on the first page, it's, it's not going to be on the second page. If the first page is super relevant and you need more, then that's when you go to the second page. Um, so we've talked about some of this. Uh, I think all of it probably. Not all of it. Oh, uh, at the, so you can also see it gives the, if we go back, you can see it gives the URL in green under the topic there. Um, and the URL can tell you whether it's a, you know, what is the source of the result. Is it a government website with .gov or um, is it a Wikipedia source with uh, Wikipedia in the name? You can also see and unfortunately, I don't think on the sample you can see it. Most of these are web pages, but some of them will have a little square brackets, PDF, PowerPoint, doc, um, and that's just a file type. And so you can also search for that by going file type colon PDF, and then it'll only pull up PDF results. Um, so, yes. Um, 
And if you're searching Google, uh, try if you're if you're not interested in what your patients are going to be seeing, use the medical terms instead of the layman's terms, like myocardial infarction instead of heart attack. Uh, these will pull up different results and provide you with different information. Um, and so Google is, I thought there was, okay. uh, so Google's best to search when you're, when you're really just starting your search and you're getting a sense of what's available. Um, and it's also good if you've been looking in more complicated databases and you're, you're just not finding anything at all and you need to see what's out there. Um, and, and as hinted at, if you want to see what the general public is reading about a topic, this is where you, where you do your search because this is where everybody does <laughs> their searches in Google. So what, do, what is there about heart attacks? What is there about vitamin D? What is there about vaccines? Um, and this may be different than what you're getting in your, in your medical databases. Um, there's also Google Scholar, which Limits to articles, theses, books, abstracts, court opinions, um, scholarly scholars, stuff. Scholarly stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's pulling from academic publishers, from universities, online repositories, um, professional societies, and there is a lot of information in here. Um, and in fact, for those of you who are familiar with systematic reviews, it's been recommended that. Uh, Google Scholar be searched when you're doing a, a systematic review. So it is an important resource um, and it has quite a bit of medical and healthcare information. Um, however, because Google Scholar is not a curated source, it's a source that sends out little spiders that uh, search around and look for things that look scholarly, it has tremendous potential to pull in resources that are in fact not very reliable, not of high quality. So anything that you pull up with Google Scholar, as, as with anything, but particularly with Google Scholar, um, look at your resource and look at it carefully. Don't just read an abstract, read the whole article and just make sure that it sounds good. If it doesn't sound good, that's probably because it isn't good. <laughs> um, and that's so, a really nice plug for the session that you're yes, doing yes. in... Yes, so November. November. Yes, yeah. November I'm going to be doing a, a... or we're going to be doing a session on predatory journals, which talks about some of these, these sources that look scholarly but really aren't. Um, so, yes. So stay tuned. <laughs> yeah. Um, but do take some time to, to investigate the, the source that you're looking at. Um, and so Google Scholar is best to search when you're looking for academic journals and you didn't have success in any of the other databases. Um, or if you're looking for information that isn't strictly medical in nature. Um, I know that some people are, are looking for, you know, healthcare management or, or um, you know, interdisciplinary stuff. So you're looking at, at combining nursing with anthropology or something like that. Um, this because it's such a diverse and broad uh, database. There's a lot in there that you would never find in PubMed. Yeah. So, and yeah, I'll pass it back over to Marty. Good, so finally just a, um, again, a quick review about the services. And we bumped this to the end of the presentation because we know that some of you have uh, been to some of our other presentations and we don't want to overkill you um, but we also want to make sure if this is your first session um, or if you missed the beginning of previous ones that you do know about our services. So um, so like we said uh, we can do the search for you. By all means if you're comfortable and skilled um, go forth and do your own searching. You can always message us and say hey I looked at these different sites I'm not finding what I'm looking for. Could you be, do a bit more thorough search, um, particularly because we do have access to the University of Manitoba's big collection of expensive um, databases. So we have access to Medline, Scopus, um, CINAHL, yeah. all kinds of stuff. Um, so we can go in and search those two. Or if you just want us to do the search for you, that's what we're here to do. And again, never pay for a full text document. If you come across it, or if we've sent you um, a list of references and you want the full text, then you just send us a message and we send you that full text. 
we do the uh, we can also set up um, current awareness alerts. So this is if you're always uh, interested in information on one topic or a set of topics, or if you have a favorite journal or author, uh, we can set up a weekly search, and you get the list of results um, for everything that is new on that topic. And we can change it at any time too. I know somebody asked yesterday, they were like, I need to tweak up what I'm getting. We're happy to do that, very easy. And finally, our training education and orientation sessions. Again, we're happy to customize any kind of um, search. We've got our session, sorry. We've got our fall session lined up. Um, you can register for any of those sessions on our website. The links for those registrations is already up. And we'll be also be, um, I think in October or November, we'll be uh, releasing what our spring or our winter session is also going to be. And spoiler, uh, <laughs> we'll be doing our Google session again in January. Um, people really seem to like it and have been telling their friends about it. And we know not able, not everyone was able to um, to attend it. And also, since I think the last time, you can now type in www.mynet.ca and come right to our website. So that's something we've been trying to. The long-winded university of Manitoba. Yeah, .ca. Uh, so we're excited to finally have that as an option. Um, if you do happen to have access to the University of Manitoba's electronic collection, so this is if you're a student or if you have an appointment with um, uh, um, one of the uh, health faculties, uh, you can also use these resources as well. And if you um, uh, need help learning to search some of them or where to even start, uh, let us know. But there's also a different set of toolkits that um, focus on the electronic uh, databases and also the textbooks and the journals. So those are great places to go as well. So, um, Again, we'll be sending out a hand, the slide deck and also a handout of all of the essential places to search that we've covered and also when it's best to search each of them. Um, and so we've got this nice summary table that then you can uh, use as an easy access. Um, and we're curious, what, um, what was the favorite thing you learned today? Um, and was there anything to learn um, that, that you were hoping to learn about but you didn't, if you want to just take a minute and enter that in the chat box, we'd love to hear. I know, it's the pregnancy. No. Okay. Oh, I noticed you. Um, yeah, we'll also be putting up the this seminar that we've presented to you today on our website uh, to watch later if you want to or if you want to direct somebody else to it for about a month. Yeah. Um, that will go up later today, tomorrow? Uh, it should be. <laughs> it, it'll be up Soon. by tomorrow. We'll try to have it up today. Okay. Everyone seems to be either ignoring us. Um, so that's it for today. We'll be online for um, the next few minutes if you did have some questions. Oh, we have a question or a chat. Okay, so somebody... Uh, so favorite thing, search engine, okay. how to use them. Right. Um, yeah. uh, for you, those of you who are saying you missed the first half, um, again, the presentation will be up if you do want to watch it later. Yeah, we'll be able to post that. It should be up by the um, by early afternoon or by tomorrow, so you can just go to it. You'll get an email about it. Yeah, mynet.ca and it'll be ready. Um, and also in the email we send you, we will send um, just a really quick survey just uh, so you can let us know how you found today's presentation and whether it was useful to you, you learned anything, that kind of thing. So, like I say, we'll be around for a few more minutes if you've got um, some questions. And uh, uh, thanks very much for joining us today. All right. Thank you, guys.